Initially, when we are born and live as a child, everything looks so amazing. Everything looks so beautiful. Everything looks so new. As we grow up slowly, with age, many years added, we start thinking and believing that we know everything. But then small realizations come. We have visited thousands of temples in various parts of India. And whenever initially we used to find a Naga statue or a Naga sculpture, we used to be thrilled. But slowly, over a period of time, the Naga sculptures and statues became a routine. Later on, we used to get thrilled when the size of the Naga statues was big or complicated or the statue had all other elements also. But today, when we visited this place, the huge number of Naga statues was simply mind-boggling. We had never imagined in our wildest dreams that such a location, such a temple, such a place exists on earth where more than a million Naga sculptures are available. We were not aware about this till last week. However, we believe that this must be the condition of most of the people of the state of Karnataka as well as India as well as the entire world. We were amazed that such a beautiful place, such a unique place did not find coverage in the press, media, internet or newspapers. We have not seen a single program in the last many years which has been telecasted in the television or in the serials or in the movies. When we came here, we found this place very, very unique, very, very different and we believe that so many Lingas in the form of snake, the Nagas, we don't think so many Naga sculptures can be found anywhere in the world. When we spoke to the priest here, he told us that whenever people want to pray to the God and want something specifically, they will buy a sculpture of the Naga of different style and then place it in this temple courtyard. There was a time when the number of Naga images were very limited, the sculptures were very limited, but over a period of time, when the news spread that people who come and donate an image of the Nagas to this temple, their wishes are being fulfilled, more and more people started doing it. We are not sure whether placing of a Naga image here fulfills the wishes or not, but one thing is very clear that in India, devotion or Astha, there is no end to the devotion and Astha of Indians towards their lords. These number of Naga images also tells us that there are a million people who want something which they do not have in their life and they have faith that their Lord will fulfill their wishes. A time had come when the main temple complex got totally filled up with the Naga images and Naga statues and now an adjacent ground which is nearer to the river and uh, that has been taken and uh, these days when the new Naga sculptures are being donated, they are being placed at this place. Once again, we want to tell the audience, we have never witnessed what to talk about witness. We have never imagined in our wildest dreams that such a large number of Nagas could be found at one particular place. And uh, this place, as we have already said, is Gauri Bidanur. It is at the border of Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. And this place is known after the important sage in the Mahabharata called Vidur Rishi. This name of the place is a combination of the name of the Rishi Vidur and Ashwatha which is a tree also known as people tree. So this place is known as Vidur Ashwatha. Vidur Ashwatha is a tiny village situated in the Gauri Bidanur Taluk of Kolar district near Chikballapur. Vidur Ashwatha is situated near the Karnataka Andhra Pradesh border about 7 kilometers from Gauri Vidanu. This place has played a major role in the Indian independence movement and is also known as the Jaliawala Bagh of the South. The name Vidura Ashwatha is derived from the huge Ashwatha that is people tree also called Ficus religiosa located in this village. It is believed that this tree was planted by Vidur of the Mahabharata fame and this tree is supposed to have fallen down in the year 2001. It is said that after the completion of the Mahabharata war, Vidur saw a lot of bloodshed and he became very remorseful 
and asked Lord Krishna for salvation. Lord Krishna asked him to go for a Tirth Yatra towards the south, that is Dakshin Patha. After visiting many places, Vidur came to this place which happened to be the hermitage of Rishi Maitre Maharishi. Maharishi. Once he was doing Sandhya Vandana in the river, he got a small sapling and then he went to the Maitreya Rishi. Rishi Maitre asked Vidura to worship the sapling to get salvation. With great devotion, Vidura worshipped the sapling and then the lords gave him darshan and thus this place later came to be known as Vidura Ashwatha. Vidura Ashwatha. Vidura was the legitimate brother of Dhritarashtra and Pandu and he was an expert in archery that is Dhanu Vidya. Lord Krishna knew that if, if Vidura takes part in the Mahabharata then the chances of the Pandavas winning the war were limited. Since Vidura was on the side of Drodhana, he wanted Drodhana to insult Vidura so that he does not take part. This was tried by Lord Krishna and he was able to ensure that Vidura did not take part in the Mahabharata war. Vidura is also known for his Vidurniti because when Draupadi was being stripped in the open court of Drodhana, he was the lone figure to condemn the act when even Bhishma kept quiet on this occasion. And hence, his Vidurnuti dealing with Dharma, that is righteousness, is a standard text. The Naga is a divine or semi-divine race of half-human, half-serpent beings that reside in the netherworld, that is Patala, and can occasionally take human forms. Rituals devoted to these supernatural beings have been taking place throughout South Asia for the last 2000 years. These Nagas have also inspired the dragons of the Chinese myth. They are normally depicted as holy human with snakes on their heads and necks, common serpents or as half human, half snakes in Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism. Nagaraja is seen as the king of the Naga and Nagins. They are commonly, they are very common and hold cultural significance in the mythological traditions of many South Asian and Southeast Asian cultures. They are believed to the children of Rishi Kashyapa and Kadru. The mythological serpent race that took form as cobras can often be found in Hindu iconography. The Nagas are described as powerful, splendid, wonderful and proud semi-divine race that can assume their physical forms either as human, partial human serpent or whole serpent. The domain is the enchanted underworld, the underground realm filled with gems, gold and other earthly treasures called Nagaloka or Patal Loka. They are also often associated with the bodies of water including rivers, lakes, seas and wells and are guardians of treasure. Their power and venom made them potentially dangerous to humans. However, in Hindu mythology, they often took the role of beneficial protagonist. In Samudramanthana folklore, Vasuki, a Nagaraja who abides on Shiva's neck, became the churning rope for churning of the ocean of milk. Their eternal mortal enemies are the Garudas, the legendary semi-divine bird-like deities. Lord Vishnu is originally portrayed in the form of form sheltered by Shesh Naga or reclining on Shesha. But this iconography has been extended to other deities as well. The Mahabharata epic is the first text that introduces Nagas, describes them in detail and narrates their stories. Buddhism In Buddhism also, Nagas have got a lot of importance. The Buddhist Naga generally has sometimes been portrayed as human beings with a snake or a dragon extending over the head of one of the Tirthankas. One Naga in human form attempted to become a monk and when telling that such, ord such ordination was impossible, Buddha told it how to ensure that it, he would be reborn as a human and so be able to become a monk. The Nagas are believed to both live in Nagaloka among the other minor deities and in various parts of human inhabited earth. Some of them are water dwellers living in streams or ocean Others are earth dwellers living in caverns. The Nagas are the followers of Rupaksha, one of the four heavenly kings who guard the western direction. They act as guard upon the Mount Sumeru, protecting the Devas of Trayas Trimsa from attacks by the Asuras. Among the notable Nagas of Buddhist tradition is Mukalinda Nagaraja and the protector of Buddha. In Vinay Sutra, shortly after his enlightenment, the Buddha is meditating in a forest when a great storm arises. But graciously, the king Mukalinda gives shelter to Buddha from the storm 
by covering the Buddha's head with his seven snake heads. Then the king takes the form of a young Brahmin and renders the Buddha homage. In the Vajrayana and Mahasiddha traditions, Nagas in their half-human form are depicted holding a Naga jewel, Kumbhas of Amrita or Tarma that had been elementally encoded by adepts. The two chief di- disciples of Buddha, Sariputta and Mughalana are both referred as Mahanaga or the Great Nagas. Some of the most important figures in Buddhism history symbolize Nagas in their names such as Dignaga, Nagasena and also Nagarjuna. The Naga Samyutta of the Pali Canon consists of suttas specifically devoted to explaining the nature of the Nagas. In the Devadatta chapter of Lotus Sutra, the daughter of the Dragon King, an eight-year-old Longnu, that is Naga Kanya, after lis- listening to Manjushri, preaches the Lotus Sutra, transform- transforms into a male Bodhisattva and immediately reaches enlightenment. Some say this tale appears to reinforce the viewpoint prevalent in Mahayana scriptures that a male body is required for Buddhahood. Even if a being so advanced in realization that they can magically transform their body at will and demonstrate the emptiness of the physical form itself. In Thailand and Java, the Naga is a wealthy underworld deity. For Malay sailors, Nagas are a type of dragon with many heads. In Laos, they are big water serpents. In Sri Lanka, the Naga people were believed to be the ancient tribe and origin of Sri Lanka. In Cambodia, the stories of Nagas have existed have existed for thousands of years in Khmer society since the Funan era. According to reports by two Chinese envoys, Khan Tai and Zhu Ying, the state of Funan was established in the 1st century CE by an Indian prince named Kaundinya I, who married a Naga princess named Soma. <coughs> Some of the important Nagas are the Adi Shesha, on whom Vishnu in Yoga Nidra, that is Anant Shayana, is sleeping. The second one is Vasuki, the king of Nagas, and who coils over Lord Shiva's neck and offered to serve the rope to pull Mount Pandara in the Samudra Manthan. The third important Naga is Kaliya, a snake conquered by Lord Krishna. Fourth one is Manasa, the Hindu goddess of Nagas and curer of snake bite and sister of Vasuki. Takshaka, the tribal king of Nagas, Ulupi, a companion of Arjuna in the epic Mahabharata, Karakotaka, a Naga king in Indian mythology who controls weather that lived in the forest, Nishad kingdom, then Ukalinda, a Naga in Buddhism who, protect, who protected the Gautama Buddha from the elements, Padmavati, the, the Naga queen and companion of Dharendra, Dharanendra, Apala, Naga in Buddhist mythology. That was all from our side. And if you wish and if you believe that some of your wishes need to be fulfilled, you may like to come here at this beautiful place and donate a Naga to the Lord here. If you have liked this video, you may like to share it among your friends, colleagues and loved ones so that they are also able to know that the station, this beautiful land is full of mysteries and whenever one thinks that he already knows everything, there are many places waiting to be discovered. Tell us.